Hey everyone, today's video is sponsored by Dragonair Silent Gods. It's this amazing open world strategy RPG that's taking the gaming world by storm. Picture this, a game that blends the best of classic Western TRPG gameplay with the rich fantasy world of Dungeons and Dragons, the most popular TRPG TP. And get this, Dragonair isn't just popular, it's a global sensation. With over 10 million downloads and topping the charts in more than 10 regions, it's clear that gamers everywhere are loving it. Plus, it's available on all your favorite platforms, Windows, Mac, Steam, Epic, Android, and iOS. Now for the Dungeons and Dragons fans out there, you're in for a treat. Dragonair has officially teamed up with D&D. That's right, characters like Driss Duerden and Erdu are stepping into the world of Dragonair on November 17th. And that's just the start. There's more D&D content coming in future seasonal updates. I'm especially excited about Drist and his Black Panther Guinevar storyline. It's a complete independent adventure that's part of this collaboration as you play through their epic journey. What makes Dragonair Silent Gods really stand out is how it captures the essence of D&D. You've got dice roll checks, the freedom to create unique characters, and intense tactical grid-based battles. It's like bringing your tabletop experience to the digital world. So you're ready to dive into this adventure? Join D&D Legends and Dragonair by clicking the link in the description below. We are That's the short. It looks real good. Thanks, size. We were doing vocal warm ups, okay? Excellent. Oh my god. That's a good, that's a good fucking shit right there. I like that. You know, my throat is feeling more open. Thank you very much for that. Very good. Uh, that's what she said. That's what she oh, said. Lynn. Hey! Forget hey. about it. Uh, Naomi, you want to hit us up with a recap? <laughs> oh, oh. In the last episode, uh, after a few, what? <laughs> no, uh, it was you... especially loud. Sorry, uh, oh. Lobos. Do you want to hit Sorry, us up with a recap? <laughs> no. <laughs> Showers. Are you sure? No. I'm good. Are, are you sure? Are you sure? Uh, I'm sure. Uh, are you most certain? Uh, most that you don't want to read the recap. We cannot hear what? you. I want to hear it. Like Let's go. Wait, wait, hold on. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Who? Can wait, you wait. Not... No, that's me. What? That's me. That's not me. That's not me. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. I this is dumb. I but, love it. Okay. I love it. We were someone... sharing a microphone while playing Fortnite the other night, oh. and I had it muted. How is that way. dumb? <laughs> How is that dumb? Wow. I'm just. What? I'm just saying. Explain it. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I, I thought you were dumb. muted. <clears throat> okay, no, you were not. Yeah. All right. Yes. <clears throat> Let's go. Uh -huh. <clears throat> On the last episode, after a few hours of travel past Claybury, we arrived at the capital of Kathos, Lewindolin. Gareth and Vanya had never been off of Asmodia, so it was a real wonder for them to see grass and stuff. <laughs> after some wide-eyed wonder, they went to their hotel. We went to our hotel and got three rooms. Cheetle roomed with Gareth, Vanya with Vizika, and Marius with Cheats. We got room 301, 311, and 312 for anyone who, to whom it matters. Ooh. Although the rooms are like right beside each other, so the jump in numbers doesn't make sense. But, you know, mm. woo! everyone took their time getting settled in and engaging in some hotel RP, including the first hot showers Gareth and Vanya had ever had. There was a lot of shower RP. <laughs> After an hour of that, they went to Istarian Barbecue. We ate so much meat and sauces and drank so much pickle sake and even got to see Gagzag come out and say that he hates humans. It was the best. Until Cheetle came and told us that we were going to see the Senate the very next day. While we were mulling over all of this very concerned, Cheats revealed that a friend had reached out to her and knew that we were on our way to talk about the big baby. But she didn't remember the details of the conversation and was a bit distraught about it. Cheetle pointed out that it was probably due to her drugs and she got really upset about it. Cheetle recommended that we reach out to this friend if they're powerful enough to send such magics on a whim. <clears throat> Marius was not happy about it, but agreed. After eating, or their fill, Marius tracked his prosthetic that Cheats was wearing to an arcade because she had run away all moody and unhappy. And they decided to head over. 
join her and play some games and claw machines and stuff. Cheats forgave Marius after some DDR. Vizika and Vanya ate lots of candies, and Cheetle kept drinking as he showed Gareth how to play the fishing game, which he failed at terribly and then tore right off the machine. And then, uh, Marius fixed. They headed back to their rooms. Vanya and Vizika ordered room service. Marius upgraded Cheat's legs with some hella boots to make her, make her extra quiet and also worked on formulating her drugs to be <clears> less <throat> addictive to her. What a good guy. Gareth lovingly placed a cold, wet towel, dipped into the toilet, on Cheetle's forehead as he sweat out his alcohol. <laughs> In the morning, they woke up, got ready, and all headed to the Senate together. They took our weapons, except to Vizika's quarterstaff, which she's using to help her walk. Mm -hmm. And we walked into the projection hall, where we would virtually meet the Senate over Ionian Zoom. The Speaker of the Senate <laughs> stood up and introduced himself, and the meeting begins. Oh my god. All right, we're here. Blam, blam, blam. Mar oh, Marius' new icon. Actually, Marius' old icon. I forgot I had this. <laughs> forgot I had out of armor Marius. I totally forgot about that. Oh my. Oh yes, indeed. Totally forgot. All right, uh, give me one second. <laughs> okay. Wait, this is just a Zoom call? <laughs> Wait, yeah. don't leave! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like a full body projection. Um, I really don't want to turn on my camera. I think I'll just stay uh yeah, I'll just it. stay in audio if that's okay. <laughs> no. I'm oh. using the cool green screen with like the ocean in the background. Alright, oh, just gosh, these guys are so crazy. <laughs> oh, was I not muted? Oh my god, that's so embarrassing. Alright. <laughs> Let's get to it. <laughs> What are you laughing about? What's so freaking? I love that you. motherfucker said shrub up. Who me? No, I not. I did not. I did not. I'm trying to get into it. It's but was fine. I'm trying to get into character, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm also trying really to get into character. You're just stifling the creativeness. I. It, you can do whatever you want, bud. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, too. <laughs> I love you. Go, I love go, you king. Too. All right, let's do go it. Off, king. Let's do it. This time, <laughs> I'm a douchebag. I'm a douchebag. I'm a douchebag. <laughs> Here we go. Nice. Oh, <laughs> I'm, a douchebag, I'm a douchebag. Okay. Oh, no, just channel the power of gag zag. Here we go. All right. Getting my audio up. Audio jungle. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm, I'm not in the game. <laughs> Oop. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Get in the game. <laughs> I had it open on your stream and I was like, ah, yes, head in the I game. see it. It's there. <laughs> oh my God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Theater of the mind. Jesus Christ. Uh, so the way this is set up while we wait for Naomi to log in um, is that <laughs> you guys um, are, um, there's two versions. Uh, this is currently the Senate's okay, version. Here with you, your illusion being uh, projected uh, over here in this sort of like hologram stage. So that way you can stand at the center, make your case known to the Senate, and then they can go ahead and deliberate. And if they need to ask some questions, uh, this may even go as far as thank you for your time. We will take that to consideration and then Ooh. disconnect you. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that can, uh, that can happen a here. Question. Yes. So, um, the room that we were in is smaller than the circle of the room that we are in now. Yes. Can we move up to the yes, walls of this? Yes, you can. Well, how no, you can, you, can, you, you can move up to the circle of this. That's yeah, it. how does that work? It's bigger than the room that we were in. You can, you can, you can literally just move up there. Uh, the walls open up a little bit so they can do, you can move around and do that. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. You logged in? Yeah. All right, let's freaking do this. Okay. Uh, here we go. Once again, you'll watch uh, as he, this man sort of like raises up his hand and then you will just hear like a little audio, just sort of a speaker, just sort of like immediately talks. Senator Kurd, speaker of the Kathosia district and speaker of the Iodian Senate. 
and then he'll kind of like stand up. Uh, greetings and salutations from across the star of sea, uh, through the sea of stars. It, uh, by understanding, we have, uh, shadow hunters from Asmodia. Uh, we thank you for your service as always. How can the Senate assist you? And, uh, as you're walking around, uh, you'll see Cheetle kind of like look around. This is the first time he's ever had this conversation with anybody as he's looking at the five of you. And uh, he just kind of like looks around a bit and says, uh, yeah, uh, I'm uh, I'm Cheetle. I am the uh, the head quartermaster and head hunter uh, recently uh, appointed of the shadow hunters here on, in Asmodia. And uh, nods and said, uh, Re- recently appointed. What could that possibly mean? Uh, if, uh, if I may, this, uh, this man kind of speaks up and then you'll hear the speaker go, the, the, the speaker will then, uh, recognize him and by saying, Senator Baurut, uh, representing Asmodia. Uh, yes, uh, Senator Baurut, and he kind of like s- s- stands up a little bit. Normally when there are field, uh, Promotions. That is because the previous one would have died fighting in battle. Is that a uh, correct, uh, uh, headmaster or uh, quartermaster Cheadle? And kind of slowly, reluctantly nods. Oh, well, that's a that's a shame indeed, and I uh, sorry for your loss. I suppose. Uh, what of the rest of them? Who are these others? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, well, allow me to introduce. Up, uh, up, up, up. Like, actually, it goes. Up, 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 up. Uh, Cheetle, I, uh, I understand that you are, of course, the head quartermaster, but I would like to hear uh, the introductions from these fine and brave noble hunters who defend us from the threats from the shadow. Cheetle uh, kind of quietly <laughs> steps back a little bit <clears throat> and then. And motions you on. Uh, my name is uh, Gareth Steelfist, an Asmodian Knight of the Shadow Hunters. He'll head, he'll head nod a little bit and step mm. back. Yes, thank you, Gareth, for all that you do. And you <laughs> looks over at the oh. rackling, staring up. Go on, Vizika. Oh, I'm Vizika. I'm a rackling and a very good shadow hunter. I killed a peacekeeper. Oh, that's absolutely. What, excuse me. <laughs> he says, "Easy to rub." It's found in a city named Wardenfall, or something. <laughs> you, ki- you killed a, you killed a peacekeeper. Yeah, with my friends. I couldn't have done it without them. Did you say friends? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, once ag- well, it sounds like that would have been a dreadful encounter. We thank you once again for your service. You're very welcome. My name is Marius. I am also a shadow hunter of Asmodia. Uh, if you, you don't wish to sing your laurels as well, this is plenty of an opportunity to celebrate it. No. <laughs> he kind of gives her this like a f- slighted offended look you'll watch as this man over here he's kind of got his feet up on the table and he's leaning back a little bit and he just kind of quietly chuckles you don't audibly hear the chuckle because he's not his mic isn't on uh, but you do visibly see him like chuckle a little bit at that right a strong and quiet type uh, we accept all into the shadow hunters and uh what of uh what of you in the overcoat and the ears? <laughs> Stares at Cheats. That's you, Cheats. Cheats is staring at Vanya. <laughs> Vanya kind of touches her ears, wondering, ears. is it me? I mean, we all have ears, like. What? But yes, but the uh, the accessory that's huh. over on your head, it's a, it's a charming getup. Uh, I'm Cheats, uh, she does, like, finger guns. Nice to meet ya. <laughs> uh, oh. oh, they're all shy. It's wonderful. We understand that the Senate can be a 
bit of an intimidating place, but uh, uh, rest assured, we all want the uh, the same thing, the, the prosperity of Io. No, don't worry about it. I'm just a little hungover. <laughs> Hung over? He raises an eyebrow. And he's like, uh, yeah, what? Well, this is the first time they've been on land, of course, and I... It, it, you know, we figured we'd celebrate a little bit uh, to, of everything that's happened. Well, if there's pressing news, uh, do you feel it would be appropriate to be hung over? Oh, I work the best this way. <laughs> Sir, if you've seen the things that we've seen, you would drink too. Uh, let, let them have this. <laughs> You'll be watching Senator uh, Barut has it there. Uh, Speaker, if I may, if you were ever to step foot into Asmodia, you would probably be in a far worse state than um, these fine hunters. Uh, we thank you. And he kind of nods a little bit. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate everything that you do to defend us, to defend my homeland. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> we're right, Will. He straightens up his tie a little bit as uh, Kern continues. And, uh, what of you with the hat? Hmm. Me? Nods. I'm Vanya. Well, pleasure to meet each and every one of you. And, uh, once again, as I mentioned, this is a... Uh, an astounding day whenever we get to see what the shadow hunt see shadow hunters from Asmodia. Uh, having the opportunity to find out more of what's happening on the other side in such a... Uh, it's such a dangerous, is dangerous outlands. So thank you for for everything that you uh, that you do. Oh, as he says, dangerous outlands. You're gonna watch as Barut kind of gives a little bit of a stink eye over. Everyone else doesn't really respond uh, to this. You are so very welcome. Mm. <laughs> we do it for the people, as we all. So, uh. Uh, Master Cheadle, was it? Uh, what, pray tell, uh, was this, uh, important news that you wish to give us? Uh, as we had agreed with the Concords before, thanks to, uh, the ones that were written up, of course, by our dear Senator Barut, and he kind of gives, like, a sarcastic little bow over to Senator Kern. Um, any sort of calling requested by a uh, shadow hunter of higher authority uh, does require permission, uh, uh, does require uh, that it, there at least be a momentary audience with the Senate. Although I must admit there is a lot that has been happening here, but we want to make sure that we're taking care of things. So, uh, Master Cheadle, please, uh, we're all ears. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, right, so, um, geez, like, how do, how do I, how do I say this? Um, uh, there is a giant, uh, space baby that has come out of the, uh, the, the shadow's breach, and we are all in danger because of it. Mm-hmm. I, you watch this, it's just kind of like, She's like, gestures with her hands, like, big, <laughs> her eyes all wide. So... You'll yeah, go on. Here's question time. Yes. <laughs> My armor. Yes. Where is it being contained? Uh, it is, <laughs> it's currently being contained in the storage section of uh, of like a little armory in behind the area. Are there any outlets or anything like that within said armory? Mm. How would you know? That's why, uh, that's why my question, I'm, I'm wondering, is it possible, uh, to use their projection system? If, oh. uh, I mean, you're always free to ask. Is it possible to project the imagery from my armor here. How exactly, uh, so what are you currently wearing? Currently, Marius has his, uh, his getup that's in the, the Discord. His very, like, plain engineering mm. garb. Mm. Um, his armor has the, the bulk of his, uh, 
the, the bulk of his things. So uh, that a lot of his tools and everything like that, a lot of this smaller uh, sort of machines that he uses for the armor are all within it. Um, gotcha. So the question I would ask you is, is there a way that you would be able to know how to plug in the armor if there was a port in the storage armory? Is this place blocking our connection to our shard phones? Uh, no. Bluetooth. Would I be able to do it from my phone? <laughs> uh, if you believe your shard phone is linked to where you can get that information, then yes. What role would be necessary for this? Uh, well, I, it's really more of I leave it up to you as far as from a technological standpoint. If you feel confident enough that you can link your phone at least to display imagery, um, then you would just be able to do it. However, if you're actually looking to actively hack uh, the uh, visual receptors that's within the sentence hall, then yes, that will require a check. You tr are you trying to like project an image so they can see it the way you projected yes. like the planet and stuff? Yes. I would, I would like to... Ooh. If you're attempting to hack, then I'm gonna need a Tinker Tools check, please. Using your phone as the tool. Understood. Uh, yes, uh, we're gonna try. All right, give me a check. As you kind of open the phone and start pressing a little bit. And yeah, so as he says that, he, he watches kind of like Kern's looking around and says, yeah, I, uh, I, um, I don't, space baby, I don't seem to understand this. Um, yes, uh, so you were able to successfully do that and Ooh. upload a image of the link to the actual image itself. Pulling out his phone and sort of leaning to the side uh, against cheats, mm -hmm. he would uh, sort of very quickly tap across its screen and then hit uh, this sort of file and it would project an image of Marius's point of view, side cheats with uh, looking at uh, Cosma. You'll watch as it sort of oh, loads God. up there <laughs> and immediately projects up onto the screen as everyone jumps up in fright mm. uh, before you'll watch as it sparks away and then ah. Yes, Holy that's the one. Shit. Yeah, so by Space Baby, you may recall Cosma Kara. This is he, its, um, is it relative. He, he looks over he, and he, as you say that, he's just in shock. He's like, what? What did the devil is that? And you'll watch as this elf from down here and says, uh, excuse me if, uh, if I may be so kind as to, uh, to interrupt here. And then he stands up and then you'll hear, uh, the speaker go off. Senator Gorwin, uh, Senator of Southern Ishtar. Uh, yes, if I could uh, be so kind here. Uh, you mentioned Cosma, is that correct? Yep. Uh, I, speaker, uh, speaker, uh, speaker, Kern, this is uh, most distressing indeed. I, I am familiar with the laws that is behind uh, the Cosma threat from over a thousand years ago. And do you mean to tell me you've in that that visual that you uh, so eloquently put right there, uh, that seems to, uh, that seems to be similar to the documents that I have read before. Uh, isn't that right? Uh, my colleague, uh, Senator Seldre from over here from, from Northern Ishtar. Uh, she stands up as well and you'll hear Senator Seldre, representative of Northern Ishtar. Um, yes, that is, that is, that is quite correct. Um, uh, my colleague, uh, Senator Gorwin, and I have done uh, much study on the subject. And you're saying that's here in Asmodia right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How exactly did this happen? Oh, well, you see, and Cheadle's gonna, like, kind of step up a little bit. Uh, excuse me, uh, Master Cheadle, I... Were you there in front of the action? Did you actually witness this abomination get out of the breach? Uh, no, uh, this is from a report. Uh, then I would, if you would permit us so, I'd like to ask the person, or people, rather, uh, who witnessed such an affair? 
Is it fair to say that it is from uh, all these uh, these fine hunters from Asmodia? Cheetle reluctantly nods and says, "All right, guys, I think you're on your own." Steps back a little bit and lets you guys talk. <laughs> The image you saw was taken directly at the feet of the tear, our entrance into the shadow. It was after our fight with the warden, a test to become full-fledged hunters. So, uh, pray tell, what exactly uh, happened uh, when this thing, as you mentioned, uh, escaped the shadow's breach? Uh, were you able to face it in... Uh, in any sort of combat scenario? On our own, no. We nearly died. Not only was it present, it brought with it a horde of other demons. <laughs> nearly, she says, uh, stepping up a little bit, uh, this this uh, lichen woman over here. Um, as she stands up, you'll, you'll hear. Senator Lenota, representative of Alabaster District 1. So you fought it, obviously, and uh, lived. Otherwise, we wouldn't be seeing you here before. Uh, that's very impressive, hunters. You seem uh, capable. She flexes a little bit and slaps on her uh, her her arm. Uh, well, yeah. actually, we ran. We had to flee. We had no choice. Oh. We were pretty much out of supplies after killing the warden. Who, by the way, uh, well. <laughs> I, he thought he was doing us a mercy by trying to kill us. That was a really difficult fight, too. He almost wiped us out. And then... Very rare. Oh, go on. Oh, and then that thing appeared. He hmm. said, even the warden said it was horrible and that it was going to kill everyone and that it was very bad and not good. Uh, yeah, as uh, Senator Garwin continues, uh, my colleague Senator Lenota is a... Uh, a little bit of a hothead sometimes. Uh, she just flicks off uh, Garwin, and uh, Garwin will chuckle a little bit before staring uh, straight at you guys and say, I think what you did uh, was perfectly understandable and to try and defy the odds and face off against such a fearsome fiend. Uh, well, that would have just been a suicide mission. And now you're bringing this information to us and I feel that is very important. All right then, so, uh, how can we assist you? Uh, not, uh, not so fast, uh, as uh, Kurt speaks up a little bit. Um, <laughs> um, uh, Senator Gorwin uh, speaks out of turn. Uh, he, what I, uh, we need to have a longer discussion about this. We're already stretched thin as it is. <sighs> you speak of the situation in Clayberry. Oh, so you're... Aware of that. Well, no use hiding it. <laughs> and then you'll watch as he stands up a little bit. Uh, this this man kind of like wistfully stands up a little bit. He holds up his hand as he waits for the uh, the auto automatic cue to announce who he is. Uh, just goes, Senator Aurel, uh, representative of Kathos District 2. Yes, uh, yeah, then you must have seen exactly what, what has happened. Uh, we're currently dealing with our own situation uh, with an outside threat that nearly wiped out the almost the entire southern district of Kathos. That is why uh, the esteemed speaker is hesitant. But what I'm sure we all would have told him, and he kind of gives a look to Senator Kurd. Uh, go ahead and everyone roll insight, please. Ooh. Ooh. I'm sure the good yeah, the truth. I'm sure the good speaker would uh, understand that we would at mm. least need to continue the conversation. Figure yeah, out what resources we have. All right. Uh, Vizika and Vanya, you can sense disdain uh, from RL speak uh, specifically uh, towards Speaker Kern. So I think we're having that conversation now. Wouldn't you agree, Speaker? <clears throat> he kind of he chokes up a little bit as he looks around. Um, and then give me a perception check. 
Very good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> plus nine. Oh, is that everybody? Yeah. Oh, my I bad. have a plus nine, but I rolled a one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a one for you, brother. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, Vanya and Gareth, you can see that all of these senators, with the exception of Barut, seems to be staring uh, down Kern. Uh, Barut is uh, looking at you guys, and everyone's just kind of eyeing Kern. You'll notice Kern kind of looks at the rest of the senators, kind of clears his throat a little bit, and he says, of, of course, I'm not saying we should dismiss them right out, just we have other responsibilities that we must take care of here on our soil. Does anyone I, say anything about that? <laughs> am I still, am I able to pull up images still? Um, yeah. Marius... There's a very pointed look at the senator um, and sort of he is sort of hearing ev this this other senator's statement about there needing to be this openness, this conversation. Marius is going to project an image of Ceratos. Um, everyone with the exception of Kern and Barut, uh, looks at, immediately sees this image and they kind of lean back a little bit. And um, Kern says, what is this from the breach as well? And he kind of like looks around and uh, you'll just kind of see as uh, Senator Garwin smiles a little bit and says, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I think this is that threat that we're dealing with, as you so tactfully put it, on our soil. You faced off against this foe as well? Indeed. We encountered this entity on Mastiff Station. He was attempting to direct the station towards Arkman's power, uh, power core. Hmm. Uh, killed it. You'll watch as this Rift Elf sort of stands and you'll hear... Senator Erlin, representative of Alabaster District 2. What were you doing on Mastiff Station? We were crossing the Sea of Stars, and along our way, our barge was losing considerable power. Finding the station, we thought perhaps we could refuel and resupply. In doing so, however, we found a station rife with these anomalies mm. he nods a little reluctantly a lot reluctantly but kind of like a slow nod as he's listening and reflecting upon this and said and what was the state of Mastiff Station if such a creature was found within there Marius turns back and taps along his phone again and would project um uh, another image, and that would be the, uh, I believe it was called the cephalopod. Mm -hmm. The hecaton cephalopod. He would project an image of that as well. Most disturbing. And these creatures were just roaming the station. They had wormed their way within its very core. Some of them even acted as part of its machinery he would show the armory mimic. Hmm. Fascinating. And yet disturbing. Thankfully, the power within Master Station was redirected. We took its core. Thus, it is useless to these anomalies and their interests. And uh, you'll kind of like hear from behind you as uh, Aurel continues. Well, we thank you for such calm thinking. And we're able to, and we're hopefully able to slow the influence of this unknown enemy. Uh, anyone looking at Kern? Yes. Staring directly at him. Yeah, same. <laughs> Uh, go ahead and make an insight check, please. 
All right. Ugh. Uh, you will notice, uh, Vizika, as you've been staring at him, the bead of sweat starts to crawl on this uh, balding f- head. He pulls out a small handkerchief, wiping it clean, and uh, will specifically look over to uh, Barut. Uh, Senator uh, Barut, I know we brought this up before, but perhaps this would be prudent to discuss the Asmodia uh, situation again. Especially if there's another threat upon that arc. So you see, seeing as we helped you with your big threat by killing a, what it was basically almost a god, or maybe even was one, of this awful stuff. Uh, w- well, we helped you deal with that, and now we come here to petition for your aid with the issue of Cosmatara, who is most definitely not going to be afflicted by the Sea of Sars and is going to be able to make its way here in due time. If we don't do anything to stop it. Together. Barut nods and says, The Rackling's right. Whatever objective, short-sighted as it may be, Speaker Kern, that you have, it doesn't matter. We aren't going to doom an entire populace just to deal with a threat a little later. Uh, quite right, and I would, all, I would uh, also agree, Senator Garwin speaks out loud. Uh, from what we have read before, and he kind of looks around, nodding to everyone, the clan of Cosma is a blight to this, uh, to this system, to the entire prime plane. If we don't do something about it, it is going to cause mass destruction on an absolute global scale. And if you think it's going to stop at Io, you're dead wrong. That thing will start floating around in space. Europa won't be safe. We need to take action. And now. What do you mean, zoom an entire populace? He looks, he looks over and Barut, Barut stares and he looks down a little bit and looks over to, to Kern. Perhaps you should answer? Uh, we've got a couple of ideas on, on, uh, on, on hand, my, my dear friends. Um, and one of them includes, uh, well, relocating, obviously, uh, the survivors of Asmodia and, and distributing them amongst the other arcs. It's, you guys have seen uh, the hells within what the shadow can produce. It's an ongoing threat here to, to Io. And so we've, we've been discussing, you've been discussing, we've been discussing, <laughs> he says, looking over to Barut. It's a short-sighted plan, and <laughs> uh, and you'll kind of watch as Kurd kind of looks over and says, uh, <laughs> uh, Senator Oral, I know you are a recent replacement for the Befallen uh, that, that unfortunately fell at the line of duty. However, I would uh, expect there to be a bit of decorum. Oral shakes his head and just kind of shrugs it off a little bit before he says still short-sighted i stand by what i say well Well, as you see mr senator kern sir and as you've just said uh, it is better to take care of this threat after all any sort of distance and uh, a lack of manpower at the terror is not a good idea let me tell (laughs) you the little rackling's right and i'm willing to agree i like you I like all of you and what you stand for, what you're capable of, and the fact that you're willing to look a devil straight in the face and say no. And he kind of like crosses his hand a little bit. (laughs) He doesn't even know us. It's politics. I like this guy. (laughs) Preach, Father Seldry. (laughs) Uh, So Gorwick kind of like coughs a little bit and continues and says... Honestly, I think we should uh, put it to a vote. <laughs> Kern looks like stares straight in his eyes and says, uh, <laughs> Senator, is that an, a bit premature? We haven't even heard the cases yet. And uh, Gorwin will look over and say, uh, Speaker, if I could be uh, a little straightforward with you. He has this devilish smile. 
I don't want to be on the topic for too long, since as you said, we're dealing with many threats upon our soil, which I might remind you, Asmodia is also part of that soil. He says with this like smile on his face and you can just he feel the, 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 the versatile just oozing out of his mouth. This motherfucker is the politician. <laughs> I do not like him. <laughs> so, without further ado, we will have this conversation and then we will, if the speaker allows it, have a vote on the subject. Or we could have a, a few votes on a variety of different subjects, he says, looking at Kern. Kern goes... <clears throat> that won't be necessary. If it uh, comes to it, we will have a vote on the subject. If, of course, uh, Asmodia is, the, is part of uh, the Ionian population, and it is very important we hear their case to know what threats we're dealing with. Ooh, well, yeah. it certainly is one threat the likes of which previously threatened to lay waste to Io in its entirety. And, and a history can't fight it alone. And a history buff. You gotta read your books more, Senator. He says, looking over at Kern. And uh Kern goes, I believe you meant to say speaker. <laughs> I know what I said. Oh, Holy shit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> She's if, just sweating. Uh, She's staring directly at Kern. <laughs> I don't want to die in a few years to a horrible giant floating space baby, right? And <laughs> uh, Kurt's just kind of looking around a little bit. Everyone's staring for his response and say, uh, uh, well, uh, you uh, <laughs> bring up a good point. Oh, if I may, you'll watch as this Owlin kind of stands up a little bit. Senator Rendelwyn. Representative of Atropa District 2. Well, it's clear that these fine and able hunters are aware of all the threats that Io is currently under undertaking. And, um, seems one more that we were not made aware of. Tell me, my friend, out of curiosity, did this pink glowing figure give you a name of some kind or names or organizations or any of the sort indeed he did the entity's name was referred to as Ceratos the entity it served I believe was referred to as Hecaton you'll watch as as uh, Senator uh, Rendelwyn kind of like looks around a little bit kind of given this sort of like nod uh, as the majority of the party of the Senate is also nodding in turn. You mentioned Ceratos. He would pull up the image again. Hmm. Most intriguing. And then what was the other name you brought up? An entity referred to only as Hecaton. Hmm. Now this name we are very familiar with. You've been away from the mainland for quite some time, so let me prevent, let me uh, tell you a story of what's been happening here. Are you familiar with the the power plant? That is one second. Yeah, go on. I, I, located. I cut you oh, off my bad. Oh, sorry. No, you're good. Uh, lo the one that is uh, located in Arkmund. I spent much of my formative years in their schooling, yes. Oh, well, uh, not to distress you, although I see from your stature you probably will not be. Oh, it's our uh, dear uh, Ockmund was under attack by a foul force known as Hecaton. We're actually looking up a, a few people right now. Because they seem to have been present during the situation. There's a moment where he, Marius, very pointedly looks back to the party um, and sort of, and sort of gauges 
how much do how how many of our cards do we want to play? They were capable fighters. Perhaps you know of them. But if I uh, may, Speaker, you may. And you'll watch as uh, Rendell Wynn <laughs> types a little bit. Well, now our forensic scientists have been trying to reconstruct the footage, so unfortunately we weren't able to get a, an absolute uh, count of who was there that day. However, from what we have witnessed, they fought bravely against the Hecaton abomination. We were only able to recognize four of these individuals. And perhaps you may be familiar with them as well. Uh, and then he taps a little bit and you kind of watch as this all sparks over. Uh, and then you will see this man pop up. <laughs> you, you will see this man pop up. You will see this crazed woman pop up. Without the hit point bar, I promise you. <laughs> uh, initiative. And, uh... <laughs> And then you will see right here. <laughs> uh, so as you, <gasps> as you get, Rendlewin <laughs> will look straight at Cheats and go, oh good, you are familiar with them. I assume this one's a wanted criminal. <laughs> they all are, actually. Uh, pull up the next one. Uh, and you will watch as, uh, <laughs> sorry, I just realized he just said, yes, they all are. <laughs> <And> it's true. <laughs> We're currently chasing down this man. A disgraced cop, or uh, disgraced brat, Logan Horn. He assassinated one of the previous senators. Did it, sir. <laughs> sorry? Nothing, I just. I was so shocked to see uh, someone I'm acquainted with. Yes, I see. But this one you over know, here... I was so shocked to hear about uh, them being... Uh, oh, what do you call them? <laughs> Wild criminals! Yeah, that... Yes, it's quite unfortunate, and the one that you seem to recognize the most, uh, from my understanding, is associated with Logan Horn. <gasps> we've had gr we've had great trouble trying to find them. <gasps> However, <laughs> he looks over at Kern. Um, Kern is just looking out in space. He, you know, he literally is just kind of like typing something in. Uh, you will notice that Kern is barely paying attention to this conversation. However, as uh, Rendell Wynn will follow up looking over, seeing Kern not respond, and then look back over to Gorwin. <clears throat> uh, however, well, I don't think we are really in the market of pursuing their criminal activities. Instead, just want to ask a couple of questions of how they dealt with this Hecaton threat and how they might be in service of... Uh, our beautiful shattered planet of Io. I think we'd all be willing to uh, waive some of the punishments that they would have had to deal with if they're willing to do a little. And then you're going to watch as uh, Gorin smiles a little bit. Community service for the Ionian Senate. And I think my colleagues agree. Uh, you'll watch as everyone nods except Kern and Barut. And, uh, Kern looks up, he says, oh, Wait a minute, w wasn't this the, uh, man that we were pursuing several months back? Uh, what was his name again? Uh, uh, it's, uh, Hearn, I believe? Uh, Horn, Senator, and once again, you're... Ability to observe the obvious is astounding, uh, this council. No, um, that is Logan Horn, who is a uh, disgraced prot, former legendary detective. But we aren't interested in Logan Horn anymore for that. Senator, remember the conversation we had about a few weeks back? 
<laughs> Anything we need to be filled in on? Very strange. Yes, I believe we're being rude to our guests. This has nothing to do with them. Well, actually, this might have everything to do with them. Uh, excuse me, miss. What did you say your name was? Cheats? Uh, yep. Yeah. You uh, seem to be associated with this young man over here. What do you know about him? Uh, he, uh, he's, um, very driven. Look, are you going to keep stuttering? And this little one kind of steps up a little bit. Senator Dune, representative of Tropa District 1. Look, we're asking for some real direct questions here, okay? We want to help each other out. More of these isn't two opposing sides, okay? We need to find where these people are because they may actually be our only hope against the Hecatol threat. And also, now that you're mentioning this Cosma thing, we may need their help for that as well. But trust me when I say it's uh, within your best interest to be upfront and honest with us. I mean, it's like I had an intention not not to be nothing. I just... Uh, well, you keep stuttering. Oh, okay, that's enough right there. I'm sorry for my colleague. He could be a bit, uh, a bit brutish at times. Uh, that's okay. Had a rough night. Sorry. <laughs> yes, the drinking. Just, like, I understand. Fingers start twitching towards her belt. <laughs> it's, it's like it's her birthday, you know. Oh well, uh, have a happy birthday! Uh, did you do anything to? Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's why she's hung over. I'm sure you've all had a few parties on your birthday. There's not much that we could actually do in Asmodia to party and celebrate, seeing as it's so dark and desolate and filled with death and murder and monsters and everything like that. So we thought that maybe we could take at least one day to be happy and cheerful when we got here. That might be enough. A little thick. Uh, his, like fingers are hovering over her little yellow vials. I don't think it was thick at all. I think it was absolutely what needed to be said. Because sometimes my friends seem to forget that Asmodia is still under the protection of Io. Well, quite, uh, quite right, uh, Barrett. Very, 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 very astute. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, uh, 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 uh Madam Cheats, uh, uh, don't be intimidated by us, uh, but it is rather vital that you tell us uh, what you know about this young man. Um, I've known him for a little while, and, uh... Hey, he, what's the expression on, uh, Marius's face? <laughs> Marius, uh, is doing his best, uh, stone placid expression that he can't he's looking above like he's not even here <laughs> this projection uh, and staring very pointedly at our uh, at our owl friend and uh it's it's almost like intentional or uh, it's God, how do you describe that uh, all i heard was make a deception check oh <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, you may continue, Cheats. I just, uh, I know, uh, he's really resourceful. Um, she's like flitting her, her looks between the two. Um, and then back to Marius with this, like, help me. I don't know what to say, kind of look. Oh, my understanding, he is very resourceful indeed. Uh, we've done a little bit of research on the lad. Apparently, he's a son of a famous doctor. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah, that would be true. Um, mm. and do you think you'd be able to get him to come back here to Kathos? We have some questions for him. Uh, um, l look, the lad... The last time I, I talked to him, uh, he said he was going to space. Uh, um, he looks around uh, a little bit. Space. Okay. Well, uh, he's, he's not on planet. He's not on. Uh, he's not on the planet anymore, everyone. Uh, but thank you, Cheats. I believe that would be uh, most informative. We'll take it from here. Sits no, back I. <laughs> Her like hand wraps around like one little yellow vial, and is like clenching it. We, we've been pretty 
pretty cut off from the the mainland for a while, so it's hard to keep up with the with the going about of the people here, you know. <laughs> Calls don't really connect over that much distance. Rendlewin nods. Information might be outdated. Rendlewin nods a little bit. He, says, he always comes back. Like he, he never would leave just nowhere. Uh, Rendlewin stands back up. Uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, uh cheats. Uh, apologies for the inquiry. Uh, you mentioned he always comes back. Uh, how likely would you say he would do this? Well, he, um. Would he, uh, would he sorry, come, I. Would he come I back can't for you? Very well. Hold on. She will lift the yellow um, vial. Not here. Uh, sorry. Uh. <clears throat> Endelman's quiet. Well, I'm as an he outside obs- girl, you know. Hmm. Um. So. He would bring a hand up, that prosthetic hand, and very gently place it at the top of her shoulders. If you would like, I can speak. If not, catch your breath. Look, he's a good guy. <laughs> and I, I, I haven't seen him in a long time. I don't even know if what was sent to me was from him. All right. What was sent to you? Yeah, it was like a, just a, a feeling I got one day. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, what do you say said to you? Are you speaking of a package or some sort of magical communication? It was, yeah, like a package. Hmm. Very well. Um, uh, Madam Sheets, I hope you don't mind my inquiry even further, but, um... I uh, do. <laughs> well... <laughs> And he looks. He'll, he'll look over at you with a smile, and uh, he just he just kind of pauses. I don't for really a moment. understand, like, why you gotta know? Why are you so interested? Like, they said why they're interested. Cheats. No, no, I mean really. He looks around a little bit and says, "We would like to know where all of these." individuals are, because as far as we're concerned, they are probably the most powerful individuals on Io who could handle this threat. You handle it. So, it is in Io's best interest that we find these individuals, bring them in, so that they can assist the people of Io, just as you do every day in Asmodia. Did you say that they would receive full pardons if they agreed to help? I've never seen or met any of these people in my life, but (laughs) if I came across them, I feel like that would probably be the first thing I'd say. Hmm. Well, ultimately, pardons are given by the speaker. And I'm uh, not quite really interested in handing out pardons to things that I just don't know about, Rendlewin. Hmm. You may be interested in giving them a pardon if they're the only ones that can defend us from the threats that are attacking this very planet. The one that you say to represent, dear speaker. In fact, I think Gawain has the right of it. We should probably do a couple of votes today. That, um, <clears throat> won't be necessary. All right, then. Uh, may I continue with my questioning without the frequent interruptions? You may continue. <laughs> oh, very good. We would try for that, absolutely. However, we can't offer that guarantee at this time. Ultimately, we need to know what they're doing, what their objective is, and why they're on the run. If they're running because they're trying to flee from justice, well, that's something we could easily remedy. However, if they've done something else, something else that we don't know about, well, that's something we're going to have to take into account. Logan and Horn, as you know, uh, is on the run uh, because he allegedly murdered a senator. And that is a heavy crime here on Io. Well, hold on. You, you say allegedly. But, like, what if he actually didn't? And even if he did, or he didn't, do you really think that someone's going to want to help you if you go to them and you say, Hey, 
Hey, we want you to face against these potentially entirely world-ending threats for us, and we may or may not let you off the hook for something that you may have allegedly done before. <laughs> or we might just arrest you right after if you don't die. <laughs> she has a point. <laughs> mm. I never met him in my life. Mm, quite. Well, I suppose it's really more resource checking to see what we have available. Hmm. Oh, uh, jeez. I gotta pee so badly. I'm sorry. I gotta be right back. Uh, okay. Uh, let's go and take a break, and then we'll be <laughs> right back. Sorry. We back. Uh, there what I was. What? <laughs> what was the la what was the last thing we talked about before the bathroom break? Of the pardon, potentially or not. Oh, the eventually pardon or not. Well, I suppose it really depends on the credibility of the threat that you mentioned. The hackathon threat is very real. We've seen everything that's happened. But you mentioned this Cosma. Uh, that Cosma. Which one was it? Tara. Cosma Tara. Yes. Uh, Cosma Tara has. Uh, Peeked up from the breach, and this is an absolute uh, unfortunate set of circumstances. Ooh. But what, Senator Gowin, you've been doing some interesting reading, is that uh, correct? Uh, yeah, well, why, yes, it is, Senator Rendlewin. I, uh, who, ever since coming into this, I've been very interested in Ishtarian culture, uh, specifically that of the magical headmasters that's over there, magic little uh, Beardthorn Institute that they have uh, over in Southern Ishtar. I'm always curious of what is at Io's disposal, and I uh, read something that was very interesting. And uh, he starts to like sort and pull out some some papers a little bit. Well, I don't know about any little bearded men, but if you'd like, you can come and see the space baby. There's no guarantee he'll make it back alive, though. Oh, but no. But I guess if enough of you want to come, then, you you know. Oh, uh, my, uh, my apologies. Hold on a second. I'll look at something. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm, I'm not speaking of some little bearded man. Uh, there is a, uh, academia of arcane arts, uh, over in Southern Ishtar. Uh, several, in fact, known as the uh, the, Be the Beard Throne uh, Academia. It is a, a school for 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 wizards and spellcasters. I thought someone like dropped, like did a spit take or something. <laughs> and because I was interested, the founder of the founders of these schools, I had actually found uh, interesting little tidbits of lore that I had been reading, which might actually be useful in something like this uh, specifically if we are dealing with it <laughs> actually it's been a bit of a quandary that i've been sharing over with seldry if you uh have a moment unless there are some other cases or you'd like to make uh while we're here not every day you get to meet the senate after all and then it gives you a smile well, really, as you can see, this is a very important world-ending threat that we're talking about, so we don't need to really talk about our little trifles or trivialities that are other issues, such as things like the peacekeeper wandering around Ismodia that we took care of, by the way, because this is a lot more important than that and threatens all of us and everything that we hold dear. Well, then I think this would be able, this may perhaps be able to assist. As I have personally read some of the journal entries of an individual that is said to have uh, taken part in the fight against uh, Cosma Kara from a thousand years back. Uh, one of the headmasters of the Institute, actually. If, uh, if the Senate, as well as our esteemed guests, would allow it, I'd like to present this, this quandary over to you. Uh, you'll, you'll watch as speak, the speaker goes... <laughs> Yes, well, uh, go ahead then, Senator. <laughs> well, I will. Thank you so much for permitting me the time, Speaker. <coughs> so, I've done a little bit of research and studying upon, well, something uh, when it comes to the fight against uh, Cosma Carr from over a thousand years back. There are, in fact, many, 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 many 
many heroes that uh you kind of watch this like cheeto walks up that fought against it of course the goblins spin another tale that it was only done and handled by five esteemed goblins when in fact there were many people that were part of this fight well now hold on one second uh it was my understanding that they fought off against several gods not a single god was slain by the goblins, my, my my little friend. I do apologize for that, but their stories do like to embellish a little bit. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, get yeah, on go. with it. <laughs> I'm sure that everybody, including the goblins, contributed heavily in the fights, just as you all, stares at every one yep. of them, contribute directly to the defenses of Io. Well, there it is, little guy, and that's absolutely right. The goblins themselves were still very well capable of the fight against Cosmicara. They just were uh, the only heroes involved. And one I'd like to speak of is uh, uh, one of the previous headmasters that I read from the journal. And he'll pull out from his satchel, uh, funny enough, an old dusted book. Placing it oh, down. No. As well as, and he reaches down and puts, pulls out this sort of dusted, what appears to be ancient, uh, papy like p piece of papyrus he puts down, as well as a letter from another diary that can't seem to be found anywhere. Ahem. So, this, do you know what I have in my hand right here? He holds the uh, journal up to you all. Yep, yeah, a journal, a paper. Oh, that is, that is uh, absolutely correct. However, it is one of the former headmasters of the Beerenthold Institute, specifically that of Headmaster Aldoris Thalarian, uh, who was one of the powerful wizards that Io has ever seen. Aldoris was a very astute note keeper and was able to report in great details the fight that happened against Cosmicara, including the fall of a friend, uh, by the name of uh, Tremor Cushions, which he speaks very fondly of within this journal. Uh, he mentioned facing off against a terrifying undead fetus with a jewel that was um, Im Im um, that was imprinted upon uh, the open forehead of the uh, fetus's cavity over there. Uh, seemed to be floating around, very capable of necrotic and, electro and, and electromagnetic magics, and uh, had faced off against some things. That uh, signifies that he was indeed a witness, nay, perhaps a participant of the, uh, the fight itself. Now, the reason why I bring this up, he closes the book, is because he he provides a, a little bit of a mystery here that I think might be able to assist in uh, the final piece of the puzzle that may even be able to help us slay the Cosma threat that you all have witnessed over the breach of Asmodia. And that specifically is this letter right here, which is indeed most fascinating, uh, uh, written by another Headmaster, uh, one Alice uh, Beard. Uh, sorry. Oh, I almost said his last name was Beard Beardthrome. However, this letter itself only has the signature of Alice, assuming that this young lad never had a surname, which was quite interesting, since he what he, he eventually adopted the surname of Beardthrome of his adopted father. Here the letter states how he witnessed the death of Aldoris Thalarian by the hands of one latent beard throne in a place known as the Astral Veil. Apparently, whenever this letter was written, it was fully capable, it fully states that Aldoris died in the Astral Veil and wasn't present in the fight against Cosmicara. However, this journal of at a time a very much alive Aldoris Thalarian speaks in great detail of the slate of one Cosmicara. So we got a little bit of a paradox on our hands, and I'd be interested in finding out the truth. If you would be so kind, I would like to send each and every one of you off to Southern Ishtar, specifically so you could ask the mage himself. 
he says with a smile. How far away is that? Well, across the across the planet itself. You're gonna have to cr- pretty cr- far. cross the sea of stars. Well, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's absolutely him. correct. Uh, I'm afraid you're unable to do that. You see, he's dead. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have uh, led with that. Uh, I would ask you to speak with his corpse. Oh. What? Well, it seems the good headmaster Thalarian had made it so that his crypt uh, could be visited by those he deemed worthy. He puts it in air quote. Specifically, so that you could inquire upon the fallen whenever advice may be needed from the source, specifically of information that may not have been recorded. And apparently, Aldorus Salarian didn't necessarily record all of his knowledge out of fear that some benevolent evil force may be able to use it against the good people of Io. Ultimately, he was looking to protect uh, the our fine citizens. However, he allowed for outsiders that he, again, deemed worthy. And as a senator of Southern Ishtar, I think I would deem you all worthy to be able to speak with the corpses itself. Uh, no, wait a minute. Have any of you tried to go there and speak to it? Well, uh, <laughs> as you can see, we are... Very busy yeah, yeah, over very here. Very busy, prestigious, all that. I'm asking, have you tried and been denied? Uh, no, I haven't. Because again, uh, these are matters that we kind of can't handle at this point, especially with what happened in Clayberry and the ongoing threat against Hecaton. I figured oh. you, able shadow hunters who witnessed Cosmotara firsthand would take an interest in potentially finding some way to fight off and defeat this foul being. Yeah. Of course. Of course we would. Well, there, there we go. He says with a smile. Will you be able to secure us a faster means of transportation? Oh, of course. Uh, you'll be flying uh, first class in one of the... Uh, one of the freight planes that usually, or one of the one of the shard ships that flies over to Southern Ishtar. So, what will you be doing in the meantime to prepare for the baby's arrival or assist in the fight against it? No, oh, you seem to forget, uh, Sir Gareth. Uh, we are dealing with two threats at this time, along with everything else that it takes to keep Io afloat, as it were. While we do wish to see Kazbatara slain, there are other things that we need to maintain so that Io can stay afloat. We have the Hecaton threat, the Chi threat, as well as our current expansions outside of the planet. There's a lot happening here. So, so nothing, that's all, there's nothing. All right. Well, now, one minute there, he says, look, over to you. But that's not fair, uh, Sir Gareth. As you can see, we are doing something. We have information for you that, and we're able to grant you, uh, permission and safe passage into the crypt of an ancient archmage known as Aldor Stellarian that may be able to assist you in this process. Your expansions will be useless if we're all dead. <laughs> oh. He does have a point. However, the expansions are still happening. We can't just stop them on a whim. We have borders that we need to protect, and many threats out there that wish to do us harm. Just because there's one threat at our doorstep, doesn't mean there's many, there isn't many down the road. Oh, of course, that's all well and true. But just so you know, every single shadow hunter, aside from us, have already given their lives in defense of your borders. Hmm. And we thank you, dearly. I think we're getting off topic here. Um, Vizika, was it? Yep. Obviously, we're not just going to go ahead, send you on our way, clean our hands of it, and then be done with it. Now that we understand that this is a threat, it is something that we will assess and allocate appropriately. 
But please understand, we can't drop the defense of everything because of this one threat. There are many, sh uh, there are many world threatening uh, threats that are out there. If this threat is not dealt with, you won't have to care about any other threats ever again. Yes. Because we'll all be dead, my friend. Hmm. Quite so. You witnessed this, Seratos, correct? This minion of Hecaton. You flew over the city of Clayberry. You saw what, what this thing is capable of doing. If we put all our defenses on one threat, one threat that you are deeming to be the biggest of them all, we're leaving ourselves wide open for an attack against the forces of Hecaton, along with uh, the ongoing threats that we have out there in the Sea of Stars. I understand this is frustrating, and we want answers right away. Trust me, I would like them as well. And if I had some magical bazooka I could just hand you so that you could blast that baby off for good, well, I would hand it to you in a heartbeat. However, there are a lot of things that are happening here, ma'am, that we well, need to take care of. Well, certainly not. We're certainly not saying that you need to allocate all of the resources available to you. But as you can see, the mere five of us newly formed shadow hunters, recently apprentices, but a few months ago, were able to kill Ceratos and take care of that entire station that was going to destroy a whole lot of stuff and cause a whole lot of problems. Surely you have far more than five people available as the Senate of Io. He smiles a little bit and says, well, sounds like that you are our best hope. I thought these guys were your best hope. She like points to the yeah. two <laughs> like images. They're still wanted criminals. That is true, but they are capable. As of right now, I'm looking at the only individuals that managed to slay a minion of Hecton and still tell the tale. And we're telling you that on our own, we would not be able to kill Cosmetara. Which is why I'm assigning you to this task in the hopes that you can find more answers that will assist us. Surely, if we can divide and conquer, we stand a better chance. Yes? Correct. Oh, good. I'm glad we're all in agreement then. No, we're not. Vanya will just say that, like, just whispering, need... kind of. We need more than just a ride. You guys, <gasps> shit's fucked out there. Pardon my Ishtarian. I mean, whatever you call it. Shit's fucked, okay? We need more than just a ride, okay? She's oh. like got her hands out. All right now, all right. I'm not sending you to the Maw of Cosma Tara. I'm sending you to Southern Ishtar so that you can speak to a source that may be able to assist our cause here. We and need what if information. Comes to that? Well, then we check a different avenue. We can't go into what ifs. We need information now, and we need to explore all options that'll assist us with that process. We've been given a directive. Let us go pursue it. If it's a dead end, we'll find another way. That's exactly it. Thank you so much for your assistance in this matter. I look forward <laughs> to seeing what resources you'll be able to allocate in the time that we're away getting information. Uh, we well, will be... I hope it's a magical bazooka. Well, uh, <laughs> once again, if I had it, I would give it. But I don't. So we're going to do the best we can with this. Thank you again for all your assistance. And while you are away, yes, I promise you, we will go ahead and see what resources we have available in the help to slay this threat. But please understand, there are many threats that are currently out there risking to destroy Io. Not just this one. And I'm hoping you'll be able to find something that will assist us in this matter. In the meanwhile, we'll do what we can to maintain the balance and order of our shattered planet and find something that we'll be able to assist you further. Is that fair? Absolutely. Very well. 
I think we're done here, he says with a smile over to the speaker. And the speaker kind of like coughs a little bit, you know, kind of seeing the heated conversation that's happening back and forth. And um, goes, oh, right then, well, uh, uh, as the senator said, uh, you'll be given special permission to visit the crypt of Aldorus Thalarian uh, in the hopes to find uh, something <laughs> that will deal with this uh, Cosma um, thing. Anyways, uh, thank you so much for your visit, and uh, good day. Before he bamfs us out, like the just the moment before he bamfs us out, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mars is going to project two images. One is going to be Ganymede, and the other is going to be the encrypted message that he got from Mastiff Station. So he kind of... Uh as before he pushes over and he's about to press the button um he goes what am i looking at and uh you'll watch as this man stands up um uh senator erlin um what is that something to chew on while we're away uh Kern says, I, I don't understand. What am I looking at? The message comes from within the Senate, an order directed to Master Station. They knew of Ceratos. As well, they know of this planet. Um, he said, Speaker Kern says, uh, well, that is, uh, quite an accusation that's being made here. Your saying it's not an accusation. It's there in the writing. Someone issued a... Um, well, I don't know anything about this, and he just kind of, like, looks around a bit, and everyone just sort of falls quiet, and then you'll watch as Rendlewin will stand up a little bit, um, kind of looks up, and says, uh, well, I believe I can answer that question. Uh, that order was given by me. They wit they witnessed something uh, that was taken, and I believe it was that picture over there. The one of, uh, I believe that is the planet of uh, Ganymede. Am I correct on this? Marius nods. He's... He's... He was not expecting the little <laughs> bird to take, <laughs> to stand up. He, there's like this moment where he sort of takes a, a pause looking at this individual very closely. Uh, Senator Dune looks up and is like, uh, hey, uh, Senator, uh, Randallin, what are you, what are you, what are you? <laughs> Randallin holds up his hand and looks at the, the rest of everyone and says, uh, these are our allies, after all. We are sending them into the perils to fight off against world-ending threats. They came with an army, and we just delivered them a missive and a little fetch quest for them to go on their way and hope to find a miracle. I feel it's important that we are transparent here, yes, my friends? As the death of Cosma, as the death of Cosma Tara, as well as the Hecaton threat needs to be handled. We're allies. Yet we're acting like we're hiding our hands all the time. I feel a little transparency might be in order. <laughs> and uh, you kind of watch as Gorwin, his smile isn't as happy anymore as he kind of folds his arms a little bit. And he's like, uh, Senator Rendlin, you, uh, you quite sure that the people are going to be ready for this? You kind of watch as Brendelman goes, Oof, white. I believe so, yes. It's time that we show them our, our new allies. Ones that will be able to assist us, not only against Hecaton, but as well as this new Cosma uh, Tara threat. All right. My, my new friends, looking off to everyone, he dismisses us. I don't want you to be alarmed. What do you know of Ganymede? 
God. Marius looks to Cheadle. Uh, we got some mining operations there. It's pretty much a dead planet. Oh, quite right, and honestly, that is all all of us. That's that is everything all of us do about this planet once upon a time. However, would you be surprised to know that there are actually are still living Ganymedians out there, as nomads who sail the Sea of Stars? Morris's brows slowly knit together as he looks to the rest of the party. Hmm. I figured as much. And so, allow me to introduce to you, as the first Ionians outside of the Senate, to our ambassador, to the ambassador from, or sorry, sorry uh, from what I we have dubbed an emissary of Gadabed. And you'll watch as this door opens up and out walks out this, sorry. Out walks off this massive creature, heavy footsteps walking in as he approaches over to everyone. My friends, Uh, this right here is the emissary of Ganymede, Strogalis. He nods a bit and, and says, Greetings. Hello, Mr. Emissary. Uh, <laughs> she just grips her tail. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mario's realizing uh, he fucked up. Uh... <laughs> um, as he approaches over one more time, Rendlewind will continue. Well, you see, we thought we we thought we saw something on the planet itself that was rather concerning. We're still trying to verify the data of what was seen, but because of what was spotted. We needed to bring everyone back right away. As the acknowledgement of a race that was once thought dead come back to life may cause a bit of a panic during these turbulent times. As you'll see, this one looks over as he stares down specifically at Sheets, who seems to be in a panic. Do not be alarmed, Iodian. You are not actually here. And thus, I cannot cause harm to you. I have no intent to do so either. Marius. I'm thinking. (laughs) Very nice to meet you. Hello, my friend. Were you the one that saw the of the Cosmotara? Sorry. So what? You're cutting out a little bit. (laughs) Sorry. Give me a second, please. No problem. Were you, were you the one that saw Cosmotara? <laughs> yes, we all did, except him. She head nods towards Cheadle. The clan of Cosma has been a threat to, Gan- to Ganymedians for quite some time. They are our mortal enemy. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I'm thinking. Do you know anything that would help us in the battle against the Cosma? Let me think for a second. Able warriors is what would be needed against the a member of the, the Cosma clan. Ganymede is in a state of flux desolate and destroyed because of Cosma. It is the reason why we abandoned our planet so long ago. Just know that if you were to fight against Cosmotara, myself and my Ganymedian allies would assist you in any way that we can. Even if that means fighting the foe on the battlefield ourselves. Not that I don't trust our new alien friend, <laughs> uh, but I would like to roll insight. Please. 
Uh, he is being entirely truthful. I, uh, you can say- throw in there, I don't trust our new alien. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, when he speaks of Cosma, uh, there is hatred audible within his voice. Marius is Marius, who has been staring this individual down um, from the moment that they stepped through the door, hearing that level of resentment or even just outright aggression towards Cosma. Um, it's it's a very conflicting feeling. Uh, mostly because of what Saratos said being claiming itself to be a child of Ganymede. So there's some part of Marius's brain that's like, either Ganymede's way more fucked up and has way more things going on than we could ever comprehend, or this motherfucker also was part of whole Saratos' whole bit. You gonna ask him? You should ask him. Ask him if they're related. The entity we fought among Mastiff Station, Ceratos, in its dying breath referred to itself as a god, a child of Ganymede. <laughs> what? <laughs> Cast meteor swarm upon your location? <laughs> <laughs> bail, bail, bail! <laughs> Ooh, sorry, you unlocked the bad ending. Ooh, you were supposed to ask that. Oh, 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 fuck. Load save. Load. This entity referred to itself as Ceratos. Marius nods. Then what we theorize is true. Hecaton is either a part of, or is the entirety of the 100 sages of Ganymede. Was he your friend? What did he just say? 100 mages of get something. It sounds like an ancient entity. Did you understand what I said or did it break up? No, he understood. No, no, we didn't. Okay, okay, sure. <laughs> I, I didn't. I, my, my brain farted there. <laughs> A part of the 100 Sages of sages Ganymede. Sages of Ganymede. Yes. Mm -hmm. The 100 Sages of Ganymede. Are you also one of those? I am not. The 100 ah. Sages is a lineage of leaders who once led our people of Ganymede. They were fallen and taken into the ancient burial mound and crypt of the Sages. However, due to circumstances I have yet to discover, the sages seem to have combined together into an amalgamation of this slime-like substance that is referred to itself as Hecaton. And seems to have a great hatred for this planet. I am intrigued that he called himself Ceratos. Ceratos was one of the sages. And for all you know, they are dead? The sages themselves passed a long time ago. Their bodies lay rest in the ancient crypts. However, there have been some theories amongst my allies that Hecaton may have some connection to these sages. And since one of them was named Ceratos, This is starting to add to my suspicions. How old are you? <laughs> I don't. A Ganymedian never tells. 
<laughs> it has been quite some time since I've measured the years within my age. Right. He looks expectantly. <laughs> Four. <laughs> Four. Four years old. <laughs> I'm full. I'm full. That is the information that I know. Cosma has been a great enemy to the Ganymedians. And if there is now a child of Cosma that has made its presence known, then we will assist you in any way that we can. Your last, like, three to five words cut out at the end of every We will sentence. assist yeah. you in any way that you can. <laughs> I hate fucking Discord. Ah. <laughs> uh. You got you gotta you gotta get that uh noise gate down, man. Uh I have the noise gate off. What the heck? Yeah, I hate Discord. Discord! Please! Yeah, you just have to hold button for like a second and a half. More it's all it's all good. I'll figure it out, guys. Yeah, I don't we're we're good. God bless. <laughs> Thank you for your insight and your wisdom. Apologies for the rather cold introduction. I thought the introduction was rather warm. Do you have any idea why one of your sages might want to have killed Arkmund and, you know, everything in it? It is a mystery that I am trying to unravel, as what are is... my friends here within the Senate. And you kind of watch it. You are there? As you kind of watch as everyone nods. Respectfully, I do not feel safe giving that answer. Okay. We have survived through seclusion. Oh, okay, that was that was all right. Okay, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Understandable. The cosmos are pretty terrifying. He'll nod a bit. <laughs> and then he'll turn around and leave. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> it's nice meeting you. I have no more tricks on my sleeve. We can leave. Uh, Speaker Kurt is quiet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that just happened. Um, I believe this meeting is adjourned. Uh, Shadow Hunters, once again, thank you for uh, everything that you do. We'll make sure your flight is ready to go first thing tomorrow morning, or you'll head to Southern Ishtar. Interrogate the fallen mage, Aldoris Thalarian and find any information that he may have that will assist us in stopping Cosma. Uh, and if nothing else is going to be said, he pushes the button. Okay, uh, bye, bye, Senator <laughs> Dude! Bye, Senator Kern! Bye, Senator Barrett! Bye, Senator Garwin! <laughs> bye, Senator Seldry! Oh, bye, God, Senator the man. Zika. Load the map. Load the map. Hmm. Well, that was uh not as big of a waste as I thought. I was unexpected. <laughs> He looks. <laughs> Cheetah looks over at Marius. Hey, uh, good work uh, with that ace in the hole. Really caught him off guard. Unfortunately, he seemed to have an answer for it. Rather annoyingly, yes. <laughs> what, you we hoping to, to be. To hotel. <laughs> what, you hoping to be smug with them or something? I was hoping to cause a little infighting. Oh no, they, 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 there's clearly infighting. Just a little more. <laughs> now we have to go. I think we're keeping it from each other. Fazika, open the door. I open the door. Fazika, open the door. I open the door. I Fizika. open the door. Fazika, open the door. She reaches up her claw, scrabbling at it. <laughs> <gasps> oh God, they dropped us in here. There's a gas. There's gas filling, isn't there? Isn't she, starts, there? Ah! she starts knocking with her with her cane. We shall pass. 
All right. I'm going to flip everyone over. As you all return to the hotel room. Ooh. Did hey, he let's... actually say he was four? Or did it cut out? Or oh, no, I was, I was fucking around. He didn't answer that question. Oh, okay. I just said in my normal voice, he's four. Oh, okay. <laughs> and he does appear to be at least... At least four. I could infer willing to fight Cosma. He might not actually be a homie, but if nothing else, he's down to throw hands. I wanted to ask him what he wanted to do after the threat was gone, but we can ask him that later. We'll, come <laughs> we'll back probably to you, find right? out. <laughs> Very good, by the way. They weren't going to tell you about the Ganymede until someone yeah, shoved it in front of their yeah. face. <laughs> The, the hope was to basically, like, as they were about to cut transmission, basically project it to leave it there for them to, to fight over or bicker over or what have you. Yeah. Uh, but that took a completely different turn. And now <laughs> Marius has to understand that there are aliens. Um, and he's processing that right now. <laughs> hey, let's uh, let's go in someone's room, yeah? So we can talk. Yeah. Who, we have a nice bed. the biggest room? Oh, all right. No, it's full of sna- sna oh, man. Yeah, there's big leftovers. Help yourselves. Why is there so oh, much food in here? Um, we had a few. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> don't worry about it. Uh, honestly, yeah. honestly, after that meeting, <laughs> he just kind of kicks back a little bit. I don't mind. I feel, I do not feel bad charging the card. Hey, Can I order some more? Uh, yes. Oh, well, good then. Then, yes. then it's all us. Okay. All right. Beep, boop, 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 boop. Just, just I... tell him one of the same of last night. One well, of everything. Was good. It was good. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. one of everything. And two of the thing with the caramel, please. Actually, make that three. This mage. Um, do any of us know of them? Go and make a history check. Woohoo! No, I have Mario. Motherfucking, motherfucking. motherfucking Plus eight. Uh, I don't. I don't. Awesome. <laughs> you came across. Would I at somewhere? all? <laughs> yeah. The one person that would uh, know <laughs> doesn't. Um, no. I mean, you're free to look it up if you'd like. The reason I ask is uh, one of the children, uh, Seria. Who? I forgot about the kids! <laughs> ah! oh my God. I'm just no. kidding. <laughs> Are there nice like one. some daycare here? Uh, they're over at the orphanage. Oh. You know, for some reason, a bunch of people were really worried that we forgot the kids or something, and of course I took care of it. And then he stares directly at the screen. <laughs> 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 Their parents might not be dead. Why'd you put them in an orphanage? No, it, it, it's kind of like a daycare. Oh, okay. No, they, they, you know, I didn't just toss them into the orphanage and said, good luck, without saying goodbye to everyone. I mean, this you told them be... they're not there forever, right? They, they are not there forever, no. But okay. they do need shelter while we're handling all of this. Okay. Go, go on, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I knew you took care of them. That's the responsibility. I'm literally <laughs> hearing Crown laugh in DM right now. He's laughing as a DM. He's not laughing as a person. He's laughing as a DM. <laughs> of course the... The, uh, <laughs> the... The small elven girl uh, during our time on the barge uh, took a moment aside and gave to me uh, a letter, uh, a, a, a note, and said that it was something that I always had. Um, Blinks. Mm -hmm. re reading its final lines, it it feels as though it is connected to this uh, Aldoros. Aldoros, yeah. Aldoros. I'm just gonna call him Mal. I'm not saying that name. <laughs> uh. The veils of forgotten, fallen, and cold pierce their silence, let stories unfold. Retell the chapters, let them rise again, echoing through the halls of memory's domain. A dragon stands guard, steadfast and bold, over a magister's secrets, tales untold. 
Once a master of wisdom, an ancient caster, now echoes of time forever the master. A dragon. Yeah, wait a minute. Was there going to be a dragon in that crit? That's weird. Yeah, that's very strange. Talked about a magister, too, and what... Wait, Saria did this? I didn't... I didn't know what to make of it, and by the time that I had considered speaking about it, we were already at Mastiff Station. As such, my mind was drawn elsewhere during those moments, but hearing of uh, Alderos and the secrets they may hold, my mind immediately went to this note. Well, that is... Uh... He's looking at the note now. That is the, that is definitely strange. Oh. Maybe you hold on to that. Case has got some weird magic on it. Didn't you say you were meant to have it or something? She said that I always had it. Oh, okay. You should probably keep that. <laughs> he pats you on the chest. <laughs> kind of weird. It is weird. I guess if we're talking about weird stuff, um, hmm? like a long, a long while ago, I had this, like, really strange, I don't know, it was like it was a memory that wasn't mine, but it was mine. Um, well, what, what are you talking about? I, uh, I I kind of never spoke about it, cause, well, I, uh, uh, I thought maybe it was like, you know, hmm. induced by something else. He, um, Cheadle shakes his head and says, if, I don't think any of us would just dismiss you like that again. So if you got something to share, he points at his ears. I'm, I'm quite literally all. I'm like quite literally all he is. Nice one, nice one. Uh, I'm trying to remember. She like rubs the side of her head, and there's like this like thousand yard stare in her eyes. I mean, if you can't remember it, this that's fine. It'll. It'll come to you. And then you got everyone here to listen. Yeah? Yeah. Do you, do you remember when you had this vision? Uh, it was... It was... Uh, a while ago. Is she okay? She looks pale. Yeah, maybe we... Maybe we breathe a little bit. I'm sorry. I, uh, she, like, scratches the back of her, like, prosthetic ears. Did... Like, the metal that's used to her skin is just scratching it awkwardly. I'm sorry, just, uh, forget I brought it up. No, 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 no. It, it's nothing like that. But I don't stress about it it's just like trying to force it out you know you're gonna do more more damage and you're never gonna get it well just you know a lot happened today and i mean a lot like that there's quite literally an alien in the senate dragons don't exist do they no no <laughs> no dragons died a long time ago there was a dragon we'd all be dead Hmm. Yeah, you'll be good. Hmm. And we said no to good. <laughs> he looks at the, <laughs> at the dragon. He <laughs> holds up the note. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah, that's got to be metaphorically speaking. There's no. Uh, well, <laughs> we did just meet an alien. Yeah, and space is a big place. No, I know, I know, I know. Uh, we also yeah, they said they met. were supposed to be extinct for a very long time too, but they were just in hiding as uh, nomads. So maybe there's like nomadic dragons. Too. I don't want. I don't want to think about dragons hiding, biding their time. Okay, I don't. Are okay. You gonna uh, um, 
Well, I was going to say that we met a giant space baby, so True. I didn't think it was so uh, ridiculous. That's right. We're already, idea. yeah, we're already <laughs> fucked. I feel better. Yeah, and we killed the peacekeeper. We did kill the peacekeeper. Right. Well, you right. killed the peacekeeper. I thought I killed the peacekeeper. And then I you mucked really that up. Good. Hey, thanks. Only because I softened the butt for you. <laughs> he just little air punches and he like leans against the chair. <laughs> we wouldn't have been able to do it without you. Well, apparently I wouldn't have been able to finish it off without you. Because it wasn't dead. And if you didn't arrive, it was probably going to kill me in my sleep. It was a group effort. Yeah. It hey, was. Va you. hey, Vanya, where are you going? Vanya? <laughs> I'm the it's room service. Away. It's 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 here. It, I'm oh, not, okay. It? <clears throat> oh. Yeah, it's, it's more of it. It's, <laughs> they just they just they just brought like twenty five more plates. Yeah, yeah. Bring it it's in. Right bring here. it in. Bring yeah. it in. Close okay. the door mm -hmm. so we we could you know have right. a private conversation. Yeah. Uh, you literally give me the crate. Yeah. And three of the okay. caramel thing. Yeah, bring There's it in. There's a pallet with, with stuff outside. It's, yeah, toss it on the bed. Pallet? Oh my uh, yeah, gosh. It's it's pretty bad. All right. Hold on. I don't know if it'll fit through the door. <laughs> I, oh, I turned it. Okay, it's good. <laughs> this is Cheetle making that noise behind us. Garrett's backing up. <laughs> yeah, back it up. Yeah, back it up. <laughs> is, is it? Man, you look like a truck. You don't have a suit or a something? Why are you wearing full it? plate of armor on the street? You never know when danger strikes. You must be prepared. <laughs> Danger's not going to strike. In the fucking capital of Iowa, okay? And if it does, I'm pretty sure there's like 20 different things that'll stop it before it gets to you. You say it... that, but there's a Ganymedian in the Senate. Right, but I don't think the Ganymedian attacked and then suddenly was in the Senate. That's true. The Senate said we are all that stands to fight against these threats. Yeah, he probably shouldn't have said that. That really puts a lot of pressure on us, you know? <sighs> that was almost inconsiderate. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> given what they're asking us to do and to bide our time, basically. But uh, I mean, I was also hoping they were going to send at least a small army or at least raise the recruitments of the Shadow Hunters. Hey, uh, Mizika! Yeah? Why'd you get so good at the politics thing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was going to ask the same thing. You were, you were incredibly well-spoken there. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not shitting around. Like, yeah, I, I want you're probably going to be my number two after all done. Oh, no, and I wait. never thought that's I'd say that. Responsibility. Well, that's why we put it on your shoulders. Because you are ready for it? No, that can't be it. That can't be the same. Let me tell you something, Cheetle. You had a self-restraint it took for me not to ask them how they smell. It's you, not a good idea. You didn't say that. Oh, I my. didn't. Oh my gosh. You didn't mention food either. Oh uh, no. No. I was waiting. Come to think of it, we didn't even lick the walls. Well, yeah. Who are you? Yeah, by Skagzag's vein, who are you? Somebody you seek the first speaker of the Senate, I say. Honestly, I'm for it. I need to do a scan. Did something happen on Mastiff? <laughs> Mazika slowly Oops, turns into a red pile of irradiated girl. <laughs> yeah. Look, all I'm saying is, uh, uh you did you did good. Well, you told me they were assholes, so I treated them like assholes, and I talked to them like they were stupid. Well, you did that very good, because they are assholes, and they are stupid. Yep. <laughs> it's kind of like talking to children. Yeah. Also, Marius, so what the fuck? Hmm. You just, you drop, you, you drop your, 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 your hidden evidence. You're ready to go. And they had an answer lickety split. You looked like a fool in there. Yeah, that was, well, it no, was, that was really cool. Uh, it was rather surprising. Uh, again, the, the fact that they went to such uh, ex extremes as to evacuate the entirety of the facility. I still feel like there's something there. Oh no, something there's... I'm not saying. Oh no, there's definitely something there. Mm. But honestly, this is this is a, this is a good thing. No one, no one, is allowed into the crypt of a of a designated archmage. Look, you got to understand something. Io's been around for a long time, and there's probably 
a handful of 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 magisters that ever earned the ranking of archmage it quite literally means they've mastered their their pursuits of knowledge that they were masters of magic and because of that their crypts are like are are very important they're like vaults you gotta understand that okay because if someone were to go in there and turn turn one of those into like some evil lich we'd all be fucked so the fact that the Senate is even allowing us passage into an Archmage Crypt, that's, uh, that's some pretty good stuff. Once in a lifetime, no one gets to do that. Marius walks over, <laughs> closes the door. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, then, did you not sorry. close the door? I that. said close the door. I was door. holding the crate oh, with both hands. It was so very large. Here's the issue. And... It might be the most cynical mind. If we're being given this permission to visit this Archmage. <laughs> uh -huh. He's smiling, by the way. He's smiling, by the way. He's leaning. Uh huh. What's the likelihood that they're setting us up? Oh. I thought you were going to say, why don't they just use them for their own will? No. Oh. If they have a desire to get rid of Asmodia, as they discussed. Would it not be easier to get rid of the people who brought forth the evidence in this secret place? Hmm. Well, he thinks to himself, that is a very astute point. We need a contingency. More like we need Somebody to be cautious. You know. Somebody who knows why we're going there and that we're going there. Mm. Who'd you have in mind? <laughs> Cheats, uh, like, tilts her head back to give this, like, glance to Marius. A low grumble <laughs> registers within the helmet. Surely there is somebody better than that charlatan. Oh. A, <laughs> hey, uh, Hey, Marius. Yes. Remember what we talked about last night? It might be coming sooner than you realize. Like now. Hmm? Wait, what is happening? You know, I'll um, be completely honest. As much as I agree that it's a good idea to let someone know where we're going, I think the Senate's too spineless to set us up for a trap like that. This is just their way of, like, getting the responsibility off their shoulders and saying, Oh, we did all we could. I interrupted them so many times and mocked them constantly in that meeting, and they didn't say anything. Well, yeah, of course. Fact, if, they seem to kind of like it. If they... <laughs> <laughs> Not in that way! <laughs> well, you see, Vizika, they're all sick fucks. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's easier to treat them like snakes, coiled and ready to attack at a drop of a hat. Yeah, and also, and also, if they said something nasty to you, they'd be plastered all over, and then their re-election is kaput. They have to be friendly about it, you know? So you could pretty much say whatever you want. They have to keep their image. Well, they were clearly aware of the threat of... Cosma, surely they oh. wouldn't take it lightly that a new one had uh, made itself known. Mm. No, no, no. You heard him. He he treated it like a fairy tale, reciting some stories he read. I didn't pay all that much attention, to be honest. Yeah, that, that was probably good. But also, if they're allied with the Ganymedians of all people... I would think it would be in the Senate's best interest that the Cosma threat be taken care of. You know? Mm. Huh. But also... No, I don't think they're setting us up. As I mentioned before, uh, Arch Archmage crypts are heavily guarded. Constantly monitored. But also... To answer your question, 
He looks over at Vizika. Something that uh, they would not want to say publicly because it makes them look like spineless whips. How come they can't go in and do it themselves? Because the crypts themselves are heavily guarded from within and not by Senate authority. But the Arc Magisters themselves, who are way powerful than anything the Senate can put through. So, in a For way, them. in a way, he says with a smile, uh, you both are correct. They're spineless. And if we fail this, we'll probably die in the crypt. Okay. Hmm. I hate politics. <laughs> uh, sneaky bastards. I don't think they'd be let in. Hmm? Huh? I think they'll open the doors for us. But it's whatever this Aldoris has for us that we need to worry about. So, is it like they were masters of magic way back when, and now magic is way more powerful kind of thing? Mm. Mm. What's the best way to describe it? Mm. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, okay. Look out, look out there. You see, you see, you see the, 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 the shard lights that kind of keep the streets illuminated, even though it's like one in the afternoon, you can still see those lights kind of up there. Kind of see that sign over there that's animating and all that stuff. You know, mm. back back in the day, I mean, that would be considered uh, impressive parlor tricks of magic. Now it's a convenience that we take for granted every day. Mm -hmm. However, like real magic, <laughs> it ain't about a parlor trick. Hell, it even it ain't even about sending a message from across the galaxy. Real magic is life altering reality bending real terrifying shit if it's in the wrong hands so what i'm saying is let's just hope this aldoris was a nice guy because if we're stepping foot in the wrong crypt we're in for a world of pain but i do think they have a point even if this Aldoris isn't of any help. I'm pretty sure whatever magical artifacts he may have within the crypt may actually help us in our time against this Cosma. And if the Senate is just going to open the doors to the crypt and allow us in, then there's our answer. We might just get our magical bazooka. <laughs> if we live, that so. is. Mm. Plundering a crypt was not on my list. But <laughs> I suppose there's a first for everything. These are dark times. You heard what the Senate said. It's not so bad. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? Huh? Wouldn't be the first crypt anyway. Guys! <laughs> what? Can we keep the psycho levels down a little bit? <laughs> At least talk about your crypt raiding adventure. Yeah, I've raided a couple of crypts too. Look, we do what we can to survive in Asmodia. <laughs> Marius looks down to Vizika. Huh? You probably ate something what? in a crypt, haven't you? Um, yeah, she ate a desiccated hand once. Yeah. You don't know that. <laughs> we saw it. Yeah. No, you know. didn't. We I was there alone. <laughs> meta. Meta. <laughs> was it meta? Fuck. You looked a shadow orb. But it's really? basically the same thing. I did like a shadow orb, but it was bad. <laughs> did you not eat it in front of us? I could have sworn no, you it, ate it, it's a it finger. Was, you she, guys. She saw ate her a eat. finger, maybe oh, finger. once. I, I, I ate the toki. I drank the tequila. Like you, you guys saw me make the tequila no, look, out of. You toad. have eaten something in front of us for sure. Like it was, it was, maybe a finger. It might have been one of the toes. <laughs> um, but but the the, the, the hand, the troll hand was when I got that book that I went like underground. It was, I squeezed through a small hole and saw that old like alchemy station and got some stuff there while you guys were doing other stuff around the place where like the super heavy stone was and stuff. And we were all in different places 
So y'all didn't see me eat the hand. I came back and I was like, mm! and you were like, you smell funny. And I was like, yeah, I went into like a dusty place. Oh, <laughs> oh God. The breath, the stank. Sp yeah. Speaking of which, <laughs> Garrett's going to pull out like this soggy bag of who knows what and hand it over to Vizika and maybe you could do something with these troll blood fingers I've been carrying around this whole time. She takes it, opens the bag, takes a deep sniff. <laughs> oh. Don't open it here. You've been oh, carrying why, why have you been okay. carrying she that? She closes it. Gareth, what the fuck? I didn't tell her to open it. Well, tosses well, it in the sink. Well, turns my, on the fan, closes the door. Well, my, well, my appetite's done. Marius immediately <laughs> walks around, hands splayed out, and he's just casting Presti. Over and over and over and over again, <laughs> just dispensing this aerosol like. Yeah, some Ooh. lilacs, please. Oh, that's wonderful. Ooh. That's refreshing. Uh, wait, can you make anything smell like anything? I can make anything taste or smell like anything. Yes. Oh my! Oh, uh, you should have oh. told her that. Oh, <laughs> boy. You should have told her that. Well, I that's amazing. Yes. Uh, uh, that just sounds interesting to me, too. I, hmm. Oh. Well, next time we have a meal together and it's horribly mundane. Uh, yeah, wait, why happens. are we ordering all, why are we ordering room service when you can just make everything, anything taste like anything? Well, the, the, the nutrition is still the same for the food. It doesn't change mm. it in a... Uh, right, 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 right. But what I'm saying is, way. what if we just, he gets tense on the table, he pulls out the dry rations, he shakes it in front of you, you know, eat these, and just have whatever we want. How come you have never said this to us before? It's rather frivolous. Rather frivolous. How much energy does that take up? Literally, uh, I don't care. Make this taste like a taco. He holds it in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Beef. Uh, yeah, he, uh, a little chili. Yeah, he uh, he makes it taste like a uh, like a taco he'd have gotten from like a I don't know if Arkman has like food stands. Yeah, yeah, they do. But uh, he'd make it taste like one of his uh, one of his favorite food stands there in Arkman. And he scarfs the ration down. Licks his fingers, goes, that was incredible. That was incredible. And why didn't you do offer to do that on the uh, barge at any time? It was a, it was a small function that I have been tinkering on for some time. With our completion of Master Station and drawing the power, I was able to redirect some of the energy within my armor. Now I can do things like these. Okay, that's Zika acceptable. Zika is looking at Marius with absolute adoration in her eyes, and she kind of inches closer and hugs his leg. <laughs> You're the best person ever. <laughs> I haven't done anything yet. Oh, you made a front for life, pal. You're the best person ever. Yeah, you're not getting rid of her at all now. <laughs> you do realize that, right? Yeah, he's pretty all right. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be the three of you, like, forever now. You do realize that, right? Yeah. But I gave her the fingers. <laughs> Moping near the bed. <laughs> You're the second best person ever. Oh, she's oh wow. She's Thanks, Fazika. Oh, I'm, I'm right Vanya. here. <laughs> yeah, rank, rank Vanya. You know, what's her number? <laughs> go, go and say what her number is. Yeah, yeah, oh, never mind. I don't want to mm. know. All right, we as Modian stand together. Oh, In second place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna eat some no, food and now. <laughs> okay, that got real. I'm gonna get ready to shower then. <laughs> uh, well, you've heard the set it. First thing tomorrow, uh, we're going off to Ishtar. Hey, uh, wear something like warm, you know? Cause uh, snow, lots of it. Excuse me. I don't own anything of it in there. Your new cloak should help you. <laughs> oh. He's like, oh. Hey, what's up? Oh, oh, hello. 
Uh, are you doing the shower ritual now, or shall I? <laughs> oh, big guy, what are you? What are you feeling? How did you like it? Um, did it was good. Did I, yeah? You want to go? You want to go first? Sure, I can go first. I mean, no, you know, actually, probably better I go first, so you don't, you know, oh. break anything again. <laughs> did I break? Did I break it? <laughs> I, the sink is filled. What's? Yeah. And, and the so, toilet. Sorry. And the toilet bowl's open. And there's water splashed all around it. What? Is, this is the washing bin, no? No, that's that's where. And the where storage. You, no, no, hmm? no, 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 no. This is this is where you uh, do your business. Oh, oh! Don't yeah. look in the corner of the shower then. I'm, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look in the corner. No. Or, or you can tell me what's there so I don't have to look. You. You can tell me. <laughs> I'm gonna look, Aaron. You don't want me to look. Why is the door still open? <laughs> oh, come on, Gareth. Why are you taking a shit in the corner of the shower? There's piss everywhere. You couldn't have even aimed for the sink. <laughs> <laughs> and that is where we'll wrap up today's session. Oh <laughs> Holy <laughs> fuck. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. I feel like, I feel like oh. she's would have been like, right as Marius leaves. So you guys ever talk about boys? <laughs> <laughs> God. Uh, Holy shit. Fantastic session. Fantastic. Oh, BioRP yes. checked. Yes. Excellent. Absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Did you guys have fun today? Yes. Yes. Sir. Yes. It was I'm good times. So we got so much. Huh? What'd you say? I'm sorry for talking so much. Why are you apologizing? What? Are you apologizing oh, for role much. playing in this role playing game? How yeah. dare How you? How dare? How? You, sh dare. you should apologize Please. for apologizing because that's what? a bonus. Sorry for apologizing. I humbly apologize. Thank you. That I will forgive. Okay. Yeah. But you? Well, I was... Uh, mm. You'll forgive me for apologizing, but you won't we'll forgive, forgive me for talking too much. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. That's what, what's, the, what's the middle ground where it's like, I appreciate that you have nothing to apologize for. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't forgive you. <laughs> it's like, wait, it's one of these Holy words. fuck. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, let me check something. Oh, that's that's that. Okay, so I think we've got. Oh, by the way, for those that don't know, I'm happy to reveal it now because people are going to talk about it. Uh, oh. Aldoris Talarian was played by a Mr. Joe Fudge in Phase Two. Yeah, Joe Fudge. <laughs> so um, we love Fudgy Joe. So I know already... that handsome motherfucker. So I know that game is so I've already been talking to him about this, <laughs> and we may have a oh. Joe Fudge uh, guest spot for a session. Oh, <laughs> Fudge! I get to see him another day in the week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, yeah, look forward Excellent. to that. Look forward to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So I believe that was week two. So we, we're going to do another session next week. Is that good for you guys? Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah. and then we'll take the week off after that. Mm. All right. Well, guys, thank you again, and I will see you guys the next time. Thank you. Oh, yeah, brother. Thanks for running. Thank, thank you. Bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. Today's video is sponsored by Dragonair Silent Gods. It's this amazing open world strategy RPG that's taking the gaming world by storm. Picture this, a game that blends the best of classic Western TRPG gameplay with the rich fantasy world of Dungeons and Dragons, the most popular TRPG TP. And get this, Dragonair isn't just popular, it's a global sensation. With over 10 million downloads and topping the charts in more than 10 regions, it's clear that gamers everywhere are loving it. Plus, it's available on all your favorite platforms, Windows, Mac, Steam, Epic, Android, and iOS. 
Now for the Dungeons & Dragons fans out there, you're in for a treat. Dragonair has officially teamed up with D&D. That's right, characters like Driss Duerden and Erdu are stepping into the world of Dragonair on November 17th. And that's just the start. There's more D&D content coming in future seasonal updates. I'm especially excited about Drist and his Black Panther Guinevar storyline. It's a complete independent adventure that's part of this collaboration as you play through their epic journey. What makes Dragonair Silent Gods really stand out is how it captures the essence of D&D. You've got dice roll checks, the freedom to create unique characters, and intense tactical grid-based battles. It's like bringing your tabletop experience to the digital world. So you ready to dive into this adventure? Join D&D Legends and Dragonair by clicking the link in the description below.